So remember I said most humans have three functional types of cones, whereas only one type of rods. So rods are for um, dark, so when it's dark out, you've been able to see, versus cones are for color vision. So there's three of these, and these are all, all these photoreceptors are at the back of the retina. So if we've got the um, posterior chamber, On this side, we've got our choroid and then sclera. On this side, we've got these layers from ganglion cells over here and photoreceptors over here. So I'm going to draw three different colors of photoreceptors. They themselves are not actually colored but they process different colors. There are red photoreceptors, green and blue. And the other name for these is based on their wavelength. So you'll see them called L, M, and S cones based on the wavelength of light. So short, medium, and long. Because remember what these are doing is transducing light in various forms from the electromagnetic spectrum, various wavelengths into neural signals. Then we would have bipolar cells in the middle here. And ganglion cells. that then would transmit this back to the brain. So here are our cones in three different colors, each detecting a different wavelength. Here is an image of what those wavelengths look like and how the cones relate to those. So we've got our blue cones here. Those are going to be able to transduce wavelengths within what ends up being perceived as blue. That is electromagnetic energy within certain wavelengths. We see that as blue. Green is here. And red and green, you can see those overlap quite a bit. They're actually quite similar um, and Actually, red-green color blindness is when individuals don't have functional sets of both of these cones. It's actually about 10% of males are red-green colorblind, meaning because it's an X-linked gene. Um, the red, the gene for red cones is X-linked. So if you don't have this, the, the proteins that make these cones you can't see red, it looks like green because that's the next closest um, cone that's able, that light is perceived by these cells instead and is perceived as green. Some species have four cones, four types of cones, kind of cool. So for those people who maybe can't see a number here, it's because you're red, green, colorblind. Not trying to diagnose anyone here, but um, there is actually an eight here. You can go to this website and do other color plate tests to detect other types of color vision as well, color blindness. What is this last one here, this R? This is rods. So this is where rods are detecting only one set of wavelengths because they're not detecting color. Um, they're designed to detect low levels of light instead. They have high sensitivity in terms of they don't need a whole lot of light to be able to function. And that's why in night you can't see color very well. So remember when you're focusing on something like me right now and my pictures, that light is landing on your fovea. That's where the, there's the highest density of cones and that's allowing for color vision 
and also very acute good vision. This image here is similar to what you've seen before in terms of the photo um, photograph of the back of a retina and the fovea is right here, optic disc is right here. What this is adding in here is the density of rods and cones across the retina. So the distribution of photoreceptors. I've told you this verbally, but this is a nice way to visualize it. So for cones, we've got a high density right here in the fovea, and then it kind of peters out as we go away from that central, it's not literally center in the eye, but it's called a fovea centralis because it is where the center of your eye is when, in terms of light coming in. So if we were going to graph the density of photoreceptor cells, it would be very high in the fovea. Let me try that again. It peters off, but actually drops off right here. And then kind of also peters off here. Now, this y-axis says visual acuity. I'm actually gonna add in here density and I'll talk about acuity in just a moment. So this is the density of cones. Rods on the other hand are going to look more like this, something like this. None of the blind spot and then going up. Density of the rods. From fovea centralis to the two sides of your eye. The result of the density, different density of these two types of photoreceptors is that visual acuity, which means the ability to see well. For example, if you do a Snell and eye test where you're looking at, is this an E or is it an E this way, et cetera, the ability to do that well is really at your fovea. You have very high acuity at your fovea. So the fovea is gonna be high visual acuity, meaning ability to see well is, I can't spell visual acuity and color vision. If you try to identify letters in your periphery, you won't be able to do that very well. You can see, but not super well. 